Right, so what is phylogenetics? So examining the evolutionary relationships of, of organisms in, its, uh, in very general terms. So here we have a, a sequence alignment uh, for genes which are uh, found in uh, a related set of, of viruses. So we need to do the alignment because we need to identify what the sequence variation is between those different viruses in order to be able to estimate what the uh, relatedness is for, those, uh, th for that group of, of viruses. You can see sometimes it's complicated by the fact that there might be missing uh, sequence. So in general, you'll identify what the variations are in the conserved sites across uh, a particular uh, gene sequence. But you the algorithms can also take into the fact that there might be missing data at various uh, points in, in the alignment. So it's usually DNA sequence based, but it could also be based on uh, amino acid sequence or other uh, phenotypic uh, traits which differ between a, a, a set of, of organisms. Well, we'll be focusing largely on on, uh, on sequence data. So, this is a phylogenetic tree based on those viruses, um, the virus alim sequence alignment that we saw in the last slide. So what can we get from the phylogenetic tree? So, we see these branches, the length of these branches represents genetic distance, okay? So going horizontally, we can see that these viruses here, viruses 9 and 10, are more distantly related to all of the other um, viruses. So it's the length of the horizontal lines which is important in inferring genetic distance. And uh, this down here uh, is the key. So 0 0.07 refers to nucleotides uh, per site in the, in the alignment. Okay? So that gives a measure uh, of the scale of the genetic uh, distance uh, between each of the virus groups, okay? Feel free to interrupt at any stage if I'm not being uh, clear or if you want to uh, ask any other questions, okay? Um, and this, roughly speaking, is also a measure of the time since these viruses uh, diverge. So the, the greater the length of the branches, the likelihood that it's a longer period of time since divergent from the most closely related uh, sequences. Uh, but we would need, in order to able to calibrate the tree, in order to put a time frame on it, we would need to have a sense of the rate of mutation that had occurred um, across this, the phylogenetic tree. So we need to have an estimate of the mutation rate. But overall, the, the length of the branches is uh, approximate to the length of, of time since divergence. So this is the same tree. And we've indicated here uh, in green, these are called the tips of the branches. Also, some people would refer to these as the leaves on, on the branches. Lots of tree analogies here. And these, of course, are what we've actually sampled. So these are the virus sequences. So we know quite often um, more about these viruses. So we might know what kind of host they were isolated from, uh, when they were uh, isolated, what type of infection they were isolated. So we would have potentially a lot of metadata about these. And these are kind of snapshots in time of that virus isolated from an, an infection. What the tree allows us to do essentially is to go back in time and predict when common ancestors uh, existed. So what are the ancestral states for these viruses? And these ones which are, uh, are called nodes uh, in the tree. Okay, so these are internal nodes. Sometimes the tips and the leaves are also called uh, external nodes, but I prefer to leave the term nodes to describe those which are internal uh, to the tree. Okay, so these uh, nodes which are labelled here, A, B, and C, because of the fact that this genetic distance is proportional approximately to time, we can say that the uh, ancestral virus which is indicated by, at this node A, existed prior to the virus predicted at, at B, and again prior to that at C. 
And virus C here is, is ancestral to all of the viruses represented in this clade here, or this group um, within the phylogenetic tree. The other thing that's important to have is a sense of the level of statistical confidence that we have in the shape of the tree and particularly the positioning of the nodes, which contributes, of course, to the, to the shape or topology of the, of the tree. I can do this by a number of ways. Bootstrapping uh, is, is, um, is one way. Another way is uh, by Bayesian posterior um, uh, values. So for bootstrapping, essentially, uh, that allows us to get a prediction on the level of confidence. So one is a very high level of, of confidence in the positioning of that node and the topology of the, of the tree. Uh, this is a slightly lower level of, of confidence associated with, and this is even lower again. Um, this is le more likely to happen by chance than it is by the actual um, real topology of, of the tree and the real relationship of, of the, virus, uh, the virus sequences. So, uh, essentially, if you see a bootstrap value of, of one, that's a very high level of statistical support for the positioning of that node and the branch pattern in, uh, in the tree. Okay. And uh, what I've shown you is kind of a standard rectangular format of, of, uh, of the trees. You can get other formats. This is exactly the same set of sequences. Yeah, so these are other different formats of, of phylogenetic trees. And I'll point you to this uh, website, which my colleague, Professor uh, Andrew Ramba, who's based at the King's Buildings, has put together, which very nicely goes through um, uh, how to interpret a, a phylogenetic tree.